This is how to snipe in Call of Duty Vanguard. This clip right here is an example of some of the techniques that I'm going to be teaching you guys in this video and you'll be a pro in no time. I'm going to break sniping down into three stages. I'll start off with beginner tips and tricks, intermediate and then pro tricks as well. So you're definitely going to want to stay around for the rest of this. If you like what you see so far, you can drop a sub and a like and it would really help me out a lot. We're on our way to 1000 subscribers and you guys are the only way I'm going to get there. So I do hope you guys enjoy. Now let's get straight on into the first stage. Sniping in Call of Duty Vanguard is a fine line between speed and enough damage to one shot kill. For you noobs, I'm going to quickly show you guys two classes for the Car 98 k that I would recommend. If you want a full breakdown of my class that I use for the Car 98 k I will leave it in the top right hand corner. If you click that there, that it should take you to the best Car 98 k class that I would recommend. Here is the first Car 98 k This car is dedicated to a lot more damage over speed. You will find the aim down sight speed is very slow, but this gun hits like a truck. It's one shot from the knees up. Here is another way to build the Car 98 k which is a lot more aggressive. You're running around with the iron sights, a different barrel, and even a different magazine. With this Car 98 k here, you are going to have to be a lot more accurate. So when it comes to building a sniper, I'm going to always recommend using Fabric Grip, no matter the sniper that you use. Also, when building the sniper, you want to do enough damage to be able to one-shot kill consistently. So if you're not able to do that, you may want to look at changing the barrel. I would always recommend the Rio 2K if you're finding your hit markering too much. That's a quick breakdown down on how to build your snipers in Call of Duty Vanguard. Settings for people that want to snipe is often the first place they make a mistake. When it comes to regular gunning, you're wanting your sensitivity to be a lot lower, as when using a regular gun, a lot less accuracy is needed to win a gunfight. With a sniper, you've only got one shot and you want to make it count. I'm going to recommend a sensitivity from about 12 and above, but I also have some other tips I really want you guys to consider. When it comes to setting a sensitivity above 12, I want you to stick with it and never change it again. So many people mess with their sensitivity settings and it's the worst thing you could do. Sticking to one sensitivity and becoming extremely comfortable with that will always be better than changing your sensitivity every other game or at random. I'm going to leave a video in the top right hand corner again that breaks down all of my settings that I use on my controller. I'm going to show you guys quickly that I'm using 16 16 sensitivity. I am using stick and move. I am using a linear curve response type and I'm also using precision aim assist. If you want a full breakdown like I said that other video is in the top right hand corner. Now that you finally have your class set up and your sensitivity as well as all your other settings set up, I'm going to teach you guys how to set up a private match and get used to this new sensitivity. So while we're on the home screen, we've got private match down the bottom here. We're going to be open that and go to custom games. First thing we're going to do is go straight into game setup and we're going to change the map. I will always recommend a smaller map like Dust House, Dome, Mayhem and or Shipment. For the purpose of this, I'm going to use Shipment. The reason we're choosing Shipment is due to its small size. That's what she said. <laughs> So you can start to get used to close range fights when you're using a sniper. The game mode we're going to be using is Team Deathmatch and then let's break down some game rules. First thing you're going to want to do is make this unlimited time limit. Now the score limit is whatever you want it to be. If you think 75 kills is enough shots to get used to a new sensitivity or warm up, that's fine. But I would always recommend at least 200. You can always change the match starter to 5 seconds. And then we're also going to enable radar always on and make that directional. Next thing we're going to do is hop on over to the right hand side of the screen and we're going to add some bots. I would recommend adding six bots. You can do this simply by pressing A or X on PlayStation. And now we're going to quickly just change the bots difficulty. So pressing left thumbstick to see bot settings. We're going to turn auto, make sure auto fill bots is off and we're going to change the difficulty to recruit. And now that we're ready, we're going to start the match and get used to this new sensitivities. As you guys can see, I'm using a pretty fast aim down sight speed Car 98 k but this gun's going to do a lot less damage. So with this gun here, you're going to be wanting to aim extra high, either for the headshot or the very center chest. I don't want you to worry about movement too much. I'll get into that later on in the video. Now here's a warning. This is the slowest aim down side speed sniper. And if your sniper looks anything like this, just know you're a noob and you're doing everything wrong. Oh my god, where's that? Oh my god! What is that? 
congratulations you've officially passed the beginner tutorial on how to snipe now let's get straight into intermediate tips and tricks Now I've been sniping on Call of Duty for about 10 years. I started on Modern Warfare 2 and my first upload was on March 26 of 2015 of Black Ops 2 quickscoping. Over the years, I've learned some techniques that I just do without even thinking about. So this next thing that I'm gonna get into is a extremely useful tip when it comes to sniping. Now this technique that I'm gonna teach you is what we call centering. When playing Call of Duty, most snipers like to have the middle of their screen right along the horizon. What this does is gets us ready for any gunfight that we may come across. There's no point in looking down at the ground or looking too far up into the sky, you want it to be flush with the middle. What this does is reduces the amount of movement we have to make to make our one shot that counts. For example, here I am looking far too low and I have to make a drastic adjustment to make my shot. How? Did I just hit mark at that bot twice? Hello? Vanguard? What the f for example, right now I'm looking too low. What I'm gonna have to do is aim and then adjust to make the shot. So what you want to do is have your screen already in the center. So you're making minor adjustments rather than these drastic moves. So another part of centering is having the middle of your screen or this center dot where an enemy could be. So obviously we're playing bots and I can see that there's an enemy coming from this part of the map. So if I were to be running around this corner, I want that center dot to be where an enemy might be. Like here as well, and here on the wall as well. Centering and quick scoping is all about making minor adjustments. As the aim down sight speed is already very slow in this game, we're going to want to maximize everything else to give us the advantage. Another part of centering is actually already having the center of your screen on the enemy before you even start aiming. As you can see here, I'm already having the center of my screen where the enemy is before I start aiming down sights. What this does is means that there's a little adjustment that I need to make to make these shots. Like I said earlier, we want to maximize everything we can. This technique is great for when you get into multiple gunfights in a quick succession. You will get better at centering over time, and it's just one of those things you have to practice. So that is a perfect example of how perfect centering can be when it comes to chaining multiple kills together. All right, it's time to explain map knowledge. On Call of Duty Vanguard, there is a perk called Forward Intel. What this perk does here is after killing someone and they respawn, it should show an icon on the mini map like now. As you've seen there, there's someone spawned just behind this building. What this does is gives me the advantage to let me know where an enemy is. What you can start to do is learn how far you can push certain parts of the map before breaking that spawn behind the wall. So if I were to not leave or move past this part of the map, enemies are very likely to keep spawning on that exact same spot. But pushing too far into the spawn will obviously make them spawn somewhere else. The game is always going to prioritize the safest spot for the enemies to spawn. Obviously, your teammates' positions on the map are going to affect these spawns as well. But you can start to get to know some power positions on the map. Like, for example, here on Mayhem, in this middle part of the map, you'll notice that enemies are always spawning kind of down this side of the map. You can use this knowledge to make sure you're having head glitches. You can pre-aim and ready for them to come around from this area of the map. We can use this knowledge to push spawns as well. Force them to flip to the other side of the map and clear out an area quickly. And now we know they're going to spawn here or in this area of the map. Forward intel and playing these maps constantly and taking a mental note of where people spawn is how you can start to perfect map knowledge. Map knowledge is essential to getting quick kills and quick successions. Using cover while bolting or reloading can come in clutch. This clip right here shows a perfect example of how to use cover. I'll slow it down to show you exactly how I move around this cover on the tank. But first, just watch the rest of this clip. Hold the phone. Oh!
While the enemies are coming from in front of me, I'm going to be using this tank here as my primary cover while bolting. This lets me continue getting kills without the risk of taking damage and also leaving the enemy's sights. This is essential due to the aim down sight speed in this game as well as the bolt animation or rechamber speed is really really slow. So while bolting I'm popping in and out of cover from that tank and taking shots as I peek out. Congratulations, you've just passed the intermediate stage. This is Blanche from the future. I just want to say thank you to everyone that, that's made it this far into the video. This is my biggest project I've put together yet. This video is taking me a lot longer to edit than I thought, so I thank you guys all for the, the patience. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. If you guys want to let me know that you made it this far, in your comment you can put a green clover just to let me know that you guys, that you guys did make it this far, but yeah. Uh, and if you haven't already, drop a like. Anyway, let's get straight on into pro. You've made it this far, and what makes you think you've got what it takes to be a pro? Well, I'm gonna give you some techniques on how to make that happen. First thing I'm gonna break down is target priority. The second thing I'm gonna break down is movement. I'm gonna teach you things like the B-hop, the slide peak, and everything you need to know to get the advantage over an enemy. And then my third one, my third and final tip. You're just gonna have to wait to see it. So let's get straight into target priority. Team. Pause. Who do you think out of these two people I should target? A or B? If you said B, you'd be correct. This is target priority. No! Pause. Which target do you think I should prioritize? A, behind the wall. B, running through the middle. Or C, hiding behind cover. If you said B, you'd be dead correct. I think you're learning a thing or two here. Here is the last and final example. Pause. You know the drill. A or B. A's behind cover. I'm taking out B. That was target priority. Now let's move straight on to some movement techniques. Knowing these movement techniques that I'm going to teach you in this game is going to give you the edge in a gunfight. I've set up one bot, as you can see here on the minimap, he's running around here. I'm going to show you some techniques on how I'm going to peek this guy. The first technique I'm going to teach you is the slide peek. It's very simple. When coming up to a corner, you are going to slide. That's the first part of it. And then as you slide, start aiming. What this does is we are going to give them less time to see you as well as a quick element of surprise. Now there's a couple variations you can do when slide peeking. You can slide and aim, simple as that, or you can slide and jump out of it. So again, slide and jump out of it. The next technique is called the B-hop. What this technique does is continues your momentum while sprinting. So rather than sprinting out of this, needing to stop and then aim, you are going to continue your momentum by doing a jump. And as your character lands, you're going to press jump again. So I have jump on my right thumbstick. So I'm jumping, jumping as you land. Here's another example, but with a pistol. Congratulations, you can now B-hop, slide peek, target and priority, you know how to use your cover, you have a great understanding of map knowledge, you've perfected centering, your settings, your sensitivity, classes are perfect, and you know how to set up some bots. So what could possibly be the last thing I need to teach you? While you now know all of these individually, you now need to master putting them together. This will just take time and practice, and I'm sure you guys are going to be better than before. Some of you guys are extremely talented already and you just needed to know these simple little tricks and you'll be a pro in no time. You could also subscribe, that would make you a pro as well, I'm just saying, just saying. Anyway, I really do appreciate you guys watching this video. It's taken me uh, like two weeks of recording and it's taken me about 20 plus hours of editing. This is definitely my biggest project yet, but I really hope you guys did enjoy this. You guys are absolutely amazing, honestly amazing.
and I look forward to playing against you guys in the very near future. For the people that don't know, I also do stream live almost every single day. I am currently New Zealand's most accurate Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War player and Call of Duty Vanguard player, so I, I do know a thing or two. Um, so I look forward to seeing you guys there, but anyway, it's been your boy Blanche7, catch you guys all in the next one. Peace.